So great, you want to build a computer. Don't worry, it's relatively easy to do. However, one of the hardest parts about building your PC is knowing what motherboard to choose. Today I would like to show you how to choose the best motherboard for your system. First off, I would just like to note that every motherboard I cover in this video is compatible with Intel Haswell systems. If the processor you chose is an Intel i3, i5, or i7, with a 4 as the first number in the model number, then you're good. However, an easier way to check is to use a website called PC Part Picker. This site allows you to choose from a list of parts and even has compatibility filtering. When you go into PC Part Picker, choose your processor, and when you go to the page for choosing your motherboard, all of the items listed will be fully compatible with your processor. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get started. The first part of choosing your motherboard is choosing the form factor, or size of your motherboard. There are three main sizes of motherboards, ATX, Micro-ATX, and Mini-ITX. ATX motherboards are good for most desktop systems where space isn't a huge issue. They're designed to fit in most tower size cases, and usually offer four RAM slots. They often include many expansion slots to fit graphics cards, Wi-Fi cards, sound cards, and much more. For the average desktop user, this is the form factor of choice. If you're looking for something a little smaller, look at Micro-ATX. Micro-ATX motherboards often fit in smaller size tower cases, offer two or four slots of RAM, and usually include less expansion slots than ATX motherboards. Also, Micro-ATX motherboards tend to be the cheapest option, making them popular among budget builders. Lastly, many ITX motherboards are the smallest. These motherboards can fit in tiny cases, which makes them popular among media center or home theater PC builders. They include two RAM slots and often just one PCIe slot. This option is also great for those who have limited space. You can get some really interesting looking mini ITX cases, and those often support full-size graphics cards as well, which make them great for those looking to build a LAN box or just want a small gaming box for no good reason. In terms of horsepower per square inch, mini ITX motherboards and cases win hands down. Alright, so now that you have chosen your form factor, time for the more confusing part, choosing the chipset. The chipset of your motherboard is basically the main chip that handles whatever the processor doesn't. There are three main options for the average consumer as far as Taswell chipsets go, H81, H87, and Z87. There's also B85, but I will just be covering those three in this video. H81 is the most budget-oriented option. You won't be able to overclock your processor with this chipset, nor will you be able to do SLI or Crossfire with your graphics card. It has a maximum of two slots of RAM, and it only has two SATA 3 ports on it. This makes the H81 chipset good for budget builders who don't need a ton of features and for smaller systems. Next up, we have the H87 chipset. You won't be doing any overclocking with this chipset either, but it does support Intel Smart Response Technology, or SSD caching, and supports up to 6 SATA 3 ports as well as 4 sticks of RAM. You'll be able to do 2-way SLI or Crossfire with this chipset, but not 3. Finally, the Z87 chipset is for the enthusiast. You'll be able to do 3-way SLI or Crossfire and overclock your CPU. Other than that, it's pretty similar to H81. Most people generally recommend Z87 for overclocking, and H87 if you don't want to overclock, as the benefits of 3-way SLI or Crossfire are often questionable. If you want more in-depth information about the difference in chipsets, the first link in the description is always there for you. So the next step to choosing the perfect motherboard for you is brand. You'll want to buy a motherboard from a reputable brand, and some of those include MSI, Gigabyte, ASRock, ASUS, and EVGA. Again, PC Bar Picker is your friend. You can filter by the chipset, form factor, and even price you want. Of course, as with any product, you'll want to look at the reviews first before you buy. Also, when looking at a motherboard, I highly recommend looking at the new egg page, as that often includes the most information about motherboards. You can look at the pictures to make sure it has all the ports and I.O. you want, as well as even look if it matches the color theme of your build. Also, a couple quick things to look for. Headers. Headers are the connections on your motherboard that plug into the front of your case for USB, headphone, and microphone ports. Some motherboards don't have USB 3.0 headers, although most do, but it's still a good idea to check before you buy. And finally, you don't need to spend $200 plus on a motherboard. Often, gaming motherboards will cost you upwards of $250 when you can easily get very similar performance for $100. Linus Tech Tips actually has a video covering this in depth, which I will link to in the description. 
There are some benefits though, as cheaper motherboards often don't offer as robust I.O. and sometimes include PCIe 2.0 slots instead of 3.0. Again, it's always a good idea to look at what you need and find a motherboard with that. Also, the Build a PC subreddit is a great place to ask people for computer building advice. Everyone there is really nice and willing to help. Finally, when you figure out what motherboard and other components you want, feel free to comment your PC part picker permalink, and I'll be happy to look over your builds for you. Anyway, thank you for watching this video, and don't forget to subscribe for future PC building videos.